Hello everyone, welcome back on Wicos. my name is Luke Ripa and here's the review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, I have to preface this review by saying that I'm a little bit biased. I am emotionally attached to this franchise, uh, not talking about the MCU but particularly the Guardians of the Galaxy series because I went to watch the first one in 2014 on opening night in the United States while I was going to college in Los Angeles and we went to the midnight premiere in IMAX over there in Burbank and once the movie started that memory echoed in my mind and thinking nine years have passed since then and it's crazy you know uh, thinking about it and that made me emotional so I we watched this movie in an emotional state uh, almost nostalgic so you have to take it with a grain of salt when I say this is the best movie in the trilogy. That volume 3 is indeed the best save for last, so to speak, by James Gunn. The story here is pretty simple. It takes place after Thor Love and Thunder, uh, after Endgame, and of course after the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, although there is not much references about it, uh, if not in a post credit scene. The story is pretty simple. It follows this new formation of the Guardians, even Gamora is not part of them anymore, uh, trying to get everything they needed to save Rocket after he was attacked by Adam Warlock by order of the High Evolutionary. You watch the trailer, you know that uh, we are gonna visit uh, Rocket's past, and those scenes are incredible, but I'm gonna talk about, uh, talk about that later. You know how things evolve and you know this is James Gunn last Guardians of the Galaxy movie and last MCU movie in general because you know he's the head of DC Studios now. Okay so I went into it in, in an emotional state and I was played around a lot by the movie because it's very emotional. Again I already said that we visit Rocket's best and those scenes are very touching, very intimate. We finally are presented Rocket in an intimate way, in a vulnerable way, much more than we did in the past, uh, whether it's the Guardians of the Galaxy previous movies or the two Avengers films they are in. That narrative part is really compelling, but everything here is really compelling. I mean, we have a star Lord that is still grieving about Gamora because, again, the Gamora that is here now is not the same Gamora that was, you know, thrown off the cliff by Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. He's still suffering the loss. Then you have, of course, Mantis and Drax that are trying to have their friend, and even Nebula, even though, of course, she's kind of adverse about showing emotions, but it's clear that she really cares about Peter and the Guardians overall. But of course the star of the story is Rocket and his relationship with the High Evolutionary, who is a fantastic villain for the film. And I think the fact that he's a fantastic villain works because it's a personal one, uh, which is something that we didn't have since probably, now that I think about it, since Thor 1, I mean since Loki. Basically, it all works incredibly well. Again, the story is poignant, emotional, and uh, hits you where it needs to hit you. It doesn't hold back. Is this movie without flaws? No. For example, the introduction of Adam Warlock, who, by the way, here is kind of thrown in, but I mean, it's normal. Even in comic books, when a new character is presented, sometimes it looks like it's shoehorned in, but it really isn't. They are just trying to introduce a new figure and develop it later. Anyways, the introduction of Adam Warlock, I didn't like it, and I can describe it to you because it happens in the first act. We are shown uh, Adam Warlock flying to nowhere and then attack Rocket. We don't need that scene. We could have seen just Adam Warlock attacking Rocket all of a sudden, and it would have worked better. But overall, I mean, we're talking about James Gunn, and he wrote and directed these movies. He's a masterful storyteller, I think. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit about it, but I mean, among blockbuster storytelling, I personally think it's one of the best. It's masterful storytelling and everything gets enhanced by the acting of the cast. I mean, Chris Pratt is excellent, upon climbing to Dave Batista, Bradley Cooper does a fantastic job in uh, voicing Rocket. And we have great cameos by Sylvester Stallone, and Will Palter does his best, even though, again, Adam Warlock is just introduced here, so the writing is not really all that deep. 
Elizabeth Debicki takes a step back compared to Guardians of the Galaxy 1. That was to be expected, especially given they explain her origin. But the highlight of the movie is indeed Chukwudi Buji, who plays the High Evolutionary, and again, this is the best villain we had since Loki or Thanos, and it's the first villain with a personal connection to one of the characters since Loki. And he was incredible, and his writing is so effective. He is pure evil, but with a logic, and you hate him. Ibuji brings out the best and the nicest James Gunn's writing, and the thing that happened to him throughout the movie, done by our characters, you just explode in joy watching them because you think he deserves it. And that's the best thing that anyone can do with a villain, and that's the best way to write a villain. You enjoying the bad things that happen to him. Now, in terms of uh, the MCU, this is, of course, it's a step up from uh, Ant-Man and the West of Quantumania, which I didn't like very much. However, I don't know if this is like the step up that the whole franchise will uh, feel the effect from, because again, this is a James Gunn written and directed movie. He's a masterful storyteller again, so he has no problem making it work inside the MCU ecosystem. But uh, again, it's a personal movie. I'm not gonna call it an authorial movie, but almost it's the closest authorial thing we have inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe or blockbuster in general, with the most authorial blockbuster being Danny Villeneuve take on Dune. So I don't know if this gonna sign a return to form for the MCU. What I know is I really enjoyed it, even technically if you're asking about that, the Special effects are all state-of-the-art, are all great, you have nothing to worry about that. And overall, I repeat, I am biased because I went into it in an emotional state and I was played around by the narrative. I cannot not think this is the best installment of the trilogy and a great goodbye from James Gunn for the MCU. And again, We'll see where we go from here. The only character confirmed to come back at least from the credits is Star-Lord. Uh, everyone else is a kind of a question mark, but I believe we're gonna see some of them yet again. Overall, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and I gave it a very solid 8.5 out of 10. A blast, the best installment to me for the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy. James Gunn bows out in style and yeah. That's my opinion of it. Did you watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Let me know what you thought down below. If you haven't watched it, let me know if you're gonna watch it and or when you're going to watch it. Also let me know if you like this review, how I am. If you liked it, please reshare it, leave a like, do everything to help us grow here on Wikos. My name is Luke Ripa and I'll see you next time.